Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Isn't that pretty? It looks nice, doesn't it? No, it's in a plastic bucket. Still think it looks nice. This is the result of me needing something to do while I listed off 25 plants that I thought are great for a nice tropical vibe and colder climate. Part two to a video I did in, what, 2021? Not good at sitting still. Gave me something to do while I was filming that video. And now I need to decompress and just ramble about some plants that I think are fun. I've got some neat looking begonias here that I picked up from a local nursery here in my last video, the video prior to this one. I need to say that that's what last means. Interesting, different begonias. This is a plant haul slash, I don't know, look at these five cool begonias. I don't know. Just a quick hangout, look at some plants. I'll talk about why I like them. Some other cool varieties. Uh, plant chat and chill. Relaxing, fun time with plants. I don't know about you all, but I'm a sucker for begonias. There are so many different types to choose from. There are a lot of different types that are cold hardy that can be grown here in zone six where I am. Majority of them are going to be house plants and tropicals, so, or treated as annuals. Where I live, for the most part, at the nurseries, I'm used to seeing dragon wing begonias, the landscape type begonias. Sometimes you see the angel wing begonias, and then the tuberous types have the big puffy flowers on them that do not do very well in my climate. Regardless, a lot of nurseries sell them. I get why, because they're beautiful, and they're usually good in the spring and late summer, but when it's hot and humid outside, no. Those like to rot and die, and then occasionally, if you get lucky, you might get to see the like San Francisco type, the ones that have very pendulous, very showy flowers on them. But whenever I see them, those are normally already in a basket. It's usually pretty expensive and not something I can tuck into my other containers. That's where all these come in. That's why I got all of these. Some to tuck into containers, some to just enjoy as a house plant over the next few years. And one of them, there, there's supposed to be five plants here. There's only four because in the last video, if you watch that, there was a storm moving in and I had to get to another store while I was at this nursery. And I thought that I had grabbed the one that I really, really wanted and I hadn't. I had actually grabbed a different one, which is a pleasant surprise. We'll talk about that one. I'll just put pictures up when we get to that one and we'll talk about it and I'll run by that nursery sometime this weekend and pick up the one that I really, really wanted. I really wanted everything here except for the one that's going to be a surprise. So just start off with this one over here. I'm sure it's been standing out the most, so why not? have a look at it. This is Begonia Lewis Burks. Has gorgeous foliage on it, similar to what you'd see on Immaculata. The nice shiny silvery blue polka dot on those long lance-shaped leaves. It has some, not serration, but some crimples, some lobes in them. The thing I like about this one in comparison to Immaculata, which is a fine begonia, but this one is supposed to be a, a much heavier flower. The flowers are a fun pinkish tangerine colors. These haven't opened up all the way. These will open up just a little bit more, not much. This is in its prime conditions, probably into a new mix and getting the right amount of light. They'll have lots and lots of those tangerine flowers hanging out from just underneath the ends of the growths on here. Classic angel wing type. The foliage on this is going to go more into the, not lime green, but a lighter green than what you'd see on the maculata. So you can see the new growth right there comes out a nice light green color on it. I believe these go about 12 to 18 inches, may have been 12 to 20 inches if I'm remembering correctly. They have a nice wide spread to them. And again, lots of those tangerine flowers on them. The leaves are not going to be as big and crazy as you would get on a maculata, but you still get those nice silvery spots and the interesting foliage on them. Bright indirect light, just like with a lot of begonias, this is not one for full sun. I don't think anything I have here is one that I would put into full sun. If you find these as an annual for a good price, might be a good option for a hanging basket or annual arrangements in an area that gets bright indirect morning light. Maybe some direct morning sun, but not a lot. Personally, I will be keeping this one as a house plant. I want to see how this one does during the winter time. A lot of begonias can come inside during the winter and do pretty well. Still flower, still look great, and there aren't a lot of plants that will continue flowering during the winter time. I think that's going to be a good candidate for that. With this one, getting the best of both worlds. Has the interesting foliage, lots of flowers that are a color that I really enjoy on a flower, and should be pretty sturdy inside, but we will see. And this one, not a super unusual one. Mistral Pink Begonia. It says on the tag, best begonia for baskets. There's a bold claim, although this is one that is commonly used in baskets and not one that I see for sale all that often at all, just as a singular plant, which is why I got it. It's a Boliviensis, one of the Begonia Boliviensis. It has that semi-trailing habit. I'm gonna talk more about trailing habits 
in a moment with one of these other begonias. Oftentimes you see these in baskets because you can put one of these in a basket and this will fill out. And probably I'd say an eight to 10 inch basket fairly quickly. And it's just a gorgeous cascading show of vibrant pink flowers. Mingbirds like to pop their little heads in there. Don't know how much nectar there is in form, but it helps draw them to the yard. They really enjoy the uh, finer foliage that they have with the great big flowers on them. I wish that this one had some more flowers on it, but it's still little. It'll be flowering abundantly here in probably just a couple weeks, especially once I get this up into a new pot. The flowers are almost fluorescent. Such a vibrant color that it looks like it's glowing. That's right up my alley. I love nice, vibrant flowers. I'll be giving this one a try during the winter time too. The Balenthiensis type, they usually do okay for me during the winter, but I normally need to give them a big cut back before I bring them in the house. Then when I bring them in, they start to bush back out with more foliage and take a break from the flowering. It's always been what's worked best for me with this type of begonia. I have a little table on the other end of the patio where I thought this would look nice just pot it up on its own in a neat looking planter where it'll be its own thing. Don't need a lot of plants to fill it out, not having to make an arrangement, just one plant that will fill out that entire planter and be covered with flowers. Probably the most colorful of any of the begonias that I will be having out here this year. A lot of the begonias I grow, I tend to grow them for their big glossy foliage. And it's a lot of dragon wing begonias. I love dragon wing types. They're easy to overwinter. You get a ton of growth out of them. They're very rewarding to grow. But these others, you get more detail with them, like with the smaller foliage or the colorful foliage. Is that colorful when it's polka dots? You get it. You know what I mean? Okay, this is the oopsie plant. I grabbed this because it was right next to the plant that I wanted and it didn't realize so I got home that it was not the plant that I wanted. I did some reading on it and it sounds pretty cool so I'm glad to have it. I'll just have to run by the nursery and grab the other one. We'll still talk about the other one too though. So there is something about this label that has me a little bit confused. Begonia, charm pink, variegated. The charm series stay smaller and they have really nice cupped leaves on them. Slightly fuzzy, heavy texture on the outside with adorable cute little pink flowers. Lots of yellow in the middle. Love that color and that contrast. You get up close enough to the flowers, they have a little bit of a sparkle to them too, which is interesting to see. The variegated, this is, it's not variegated. I don't see any variegation on here. Do you see any variegation? Maybe it'll come through on camera and I'm just not seeing it with my own eyes. I can see where there could be variegation or just nitrogen deficiency, iron deficiency, some sort of deficiency or stress. These were under shade cloth, what appeared to be a very heavy, thick shade cloth. So maybe if I put this in a spot where it's going to get some more direct morning light, variegation will come out. I don't know. We're going to find out together. It'll be around. You'll see it in the videos. I don't have much else to say about it because it's not a plant that I planned on getting. If it does have nice variegated foliage on it and that'll be cool to see. I guess I could look it up and let you know what the internet has to say about it, couldn't I? Maybe. Oh yeah, no, not even close. So it's either mislabeled or it's just wrong. The plant itself, this plant's just wrong. The variegation should be very pronounced and easy to distinguish on here. I don't know. It, it's a cute little begonia. I'm, I guess I'm happy with it. Like, time will tell. I'll give it more light, see what happens. Maybe cooler temperatures may bring out the color. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. And the one that I had intended to get, I tried to pull up pictures on the internet so I could just show y'all pictures, but it, it doesn't exist. What that actually means is I'm probably misremembering the name. I thought it was called Fairy Wing. I saw what I thought was called Fairy Wing at a nursery earlier in the spring, kicked myself for not getting it. And then I saw it again at this nursery right next to this one. And then I grabbed this one by mistake. But I just looked up fairy wing begonia and I'm not seeing anything that looks at all like what I <laughs> thought that I was going to be buying. So uh, I, I don't know. We'll move on to the next one just to make life easier for me when it comes to editing. And I will run out to that nursery sometime tonight or tomorrow and get that one and film the rest of the video. Part of the informality, just the way I like to do things around here. Hula pink. This is another one that I'm very excited about. Can you guess why? Do you, I don't know how you can read the tag. Size on this one, 10 inches tall by 18 to 20 inches wide. It's a trailer. Trailing begonias. I don't see them for sale very often. I see them for sale in the sense of like the mistral pink, the trailing begonias. A begonia where they are slightly more wide than they are tall and they flower so heavily that the flowers pull the plant down. And oftentimes those get called trailers. When I think of trailer, it's not just that the plant needs to be wider than it is tall. It's that I want a long cascading 
growth on these. There are a good amount of trailing begonias. It's not something crazy new, but I don't ever see them for sale as far as ones that will actually trail and cascade down the edge of a container, that is. I've seen pictures online where people will take these and put them in like a flat half circle basket and put it up against a tree trunk and it just looks like the begonia is growing right out of the tree. I've always wanted to do that. Put it over the edge of a pot in a basket. It's a trailer. It has nice foliage. It's smaller on it. You can see the longer growth and the small, beautiful, dainty pink flowers. It's been flowering very profusely. I've only had it for a few days, but it's opened up a few more since I brought it home. Yeah, like I said, I've wanted to try some true trailing begonias for a long time. Some ones that really are spreaders and I was really happy to see this for sale at the nursery. I feel like there's so much you can do with a trailing begonia, with trailers in general, when you're trying to add detail to the garden. Like I mentioned, putting a half circle planter against a tree trunk and letting something spill out from the side or getting them in between some various rocks. If you have a shady spot where you could get something you want to spread and fill out with something above it and still get so have that interest of a begonia with the shiny foliage, the interesting looking foliage, and the profuse flowering. This isn't a type that you necessarily grow for the foliage. I would imagine without flowers, this would probably look like a raggedy mess. And they're going to need occasional prunings, you know, to keep their shape looking nice and to encourage more growth so that you have more flowers on them. Not a big deal, easy to do, and it's gonna look nice. Add some interest, something, some character, and a little bit different. Okay, now I just have to hop out to that nursery and hope that they still have this begonia that I apparently am misremembering the name on, but really would like to have. Well, welcome back to many hours later, a lot of time on the computer trying to figure out what this begonia is that I thought I had found but didn't find and didn't buy and a trip to the nursery later and all I can say is I think the begonia was baby wing not fairy wing I could have sworn the tag said fairy wing but baby wing pink they come in different colors here it is it's up on the screen it's not very impressive in pictures in person it looks a lot more like this one right here but nearly full grown at the size, so probably double in size, but the more classic, this is an angel wing type, but the angel wing to dragon wing shaped leaves, that was a nice light green color with the peduncles and the flowers dangling from them. Those pictures don't really look like what I'm talking about, but I don't, there's a mystery begonia out there that I've seen at a couple of nurseries, probably from Ball Seed, because that's where a lot of the nurseries, especially the one where I saw this from, gets their annuals from, but I don't know, I didn't see it. There are hundreds of plants hundreds of begonias, thousands of plants, hundreds of begonias on the ball seed catalog if you go online. And while I was there, I discovered a couple more that I don't have, but I figured I'd show off to y'all because, well, this is a plant video where I'm talking about plants that I think are really interesting. Begonia Rise Up Flamingo Dream. Look at that flower. I don't have anything else to say about it other than I saw the picture and I was like, well, that's gorgeous. Beautiful flowers. And the same thing with Begonia Rise Up Harlequin. Really cool, unique flowers. I don't usually see on a begonia. I'll do more reading and research on those for next year. I think the ship has sailed for getting those this year. A while is at the nursery, even though they didn't have whatever it was I was looking for. I, did, I grabbed a few more things because I had to. Okay, yeah, I already showed you a couple of these. Now I have two of some of them. Got another one of the hula pinks because I'm just really into it. It's got a nice vibe and I want more of them around. And this one's so full and lush too. I don't know why I didn't see this one when I was there the other day. I don't remember seeing one that was this big and beautiful and green really outshines the other one. Vigorous plants, so it's not like the other one wasn't gonna catch up with it, but whatever the case, add a 15% off coupon. That made it worthwhile. And then another one of the Lois Burks, isn't it beautiful? This one has more flowers on it than the one I showed in the beginning of the video. You might be thinking to yourself, Jeff, couldn't you just start the video over and show the nicer plants to begin with? I could, but I'm not going to. What would be the fun in that? Then you'd miss out on my incredible begonia journey. So freaking pretty, I love this begonia so much. I'm gonna pot it up in here. Isn't that the perfect pot for this? Loud and vibrant. The begonia should be able to stay in there for a pretty long time. That's gonna look nice. I may double them up and put them both in there just for more of an instant gratification. Get a really nice full plant right off from the get. And then here are two others that, uh, these are new. These, you haven't seen these yet. These have been around for a minute. Y'all have probably seen this before. It's a maculata pink dye or pink spot. Did I grab one that has a tag on it? Uh, pink spot, not pink dot. Really like these. They have gorgeous foliage with the Pink dots, very glossy, and this one has a good amount of flowers on it too. Isn't that nice? So much color, a lot. This has a good amount of flower action going on with it. I think this 
would look nice in a basket in a shadier spot. I don't know if I'm going to do that with it, but it would lend itself to that because the undersides of the foliage are, mm, never mind. The real appeal to this is from above, isn't it? I just, I love the flowers on it. I can just leave it set up on a table someplace where you can see both the top of the plants. So you can appreciate that gorgeous, glistening, glossy foliage with the pink spots as well as the flowers and those lovely peduncles and everything hanging from down below. And then an angel wing begonia called torch red. Foliage on this one, kind of bleh. Some people are really into this leaf style and shape. Not really my thing, but I do get it. I like the contrast with the reddish on the undersides and green if you look at it at the right angle, but it's really more of a, your plant is dying kind of vibe to me. Like something that's had a lot of cold damage to it, but I don't care about that because look at how intense those flower clusters are on there. This would be a great candidate for a basket, which is probably where I'll put it in a small basket someplace because I don't really, the foliage is nice, don't get me wrong. I think that that is a beautiful plant, but I'm way more into the size of the flower heads, all this cascading pink action going on there and the way that contrasts with the foliage, that's what I'm here for. It's absolutely beautiful, isn't it? on this little plant. It has great big huge flower clusters on it that are so neat to look at. Just look at all the detail that's in there. Awesome, extra long stems, sturdy peduncles, great dangly action. Grabbed all that from Timberwinds. If you're in the St. Louis area, check them out. Okay, so that turned out to be more of a ride and a journey than I expected it to be. Hope, hope you enjoyed. Was just gonna sit down and be like, hey, look, I got some begonias. They're kind of cool, let's talk about them. And then it turned into a whole thing of trying to find this long lost begonia that maybe doesn't exist. Begonia that's apparently just a figment of my imagination. A real dull time just hanging out with plants, looking at them, talking about them, thinking of different plants and things to do with them. Comment down below, say hi. Some of your favorite begonias. There are thousands. <laughs> in thousands and thousands of begonias. These are just, you know, your more typical, what you might find at a nursery. For me, this is more fun because these aren't types I normally see at the nursery, not very often. You see the maculatas, you don't usually see the pink spot, especially with lots of flowers on them. The trailing, I never see those at the nurseries out here. Like I said, the Lewis, 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 whoever this is, never seen that one at the nurseries before. So that's exciting. Got some fun plants to play with and Lots of color to add. Yeah, good times. So everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life. Everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.